Even after the episode ends, I can still hear the tech news buzzing. It never stops. We'll get you help, James. Don't worry. I've been subscribed for so long. <laughs> Just with the doctor subscribed. Microsoft has changed course and identified a zero day Windows exploit as a critical security vulnerability over a month after initially dismissing it as not that dangerous. Eh. The flaw is known as Folina by security researchers, which doesn't sound deadly at all, unless it's like one of those sexy spiders. That, oh. So their confusion is understandable. It could be a virus fatale. Exploiting Felina involves sharing a modified office file, which when opened, executes malicious code via the Microsoft diagnostic tool, even when using protected view. And at that point, what happens is really up to Folina. Researchers have observed the attack being used to target Russian and Belarusian users, and there's evidence Chinese state-backed hackers are also using it to target the Tibetan community. There's no patch yet, but Microsoft recommends users disable the diagnostic tool protocol for now, or better yet, use anything other than Microsoft Office. Come on. Have you tried those artisanal typewriters? I feel like Hemingway. <laughs> While we're talking about Microsoft, we might as well mention that they just unveiled the Surface Laptop Go To. Go To where? Jail, for making that pun. It's got a basically identical design to the original Go with an aluminum and polycarbonate shell, 12.4 inch pixel sense touch display, and a fingerprint reader on the higher end model so your college roommate can't find your secret folder ever again. Steve, stop it! Not this time, Steve. <laughs> Inside though are newer Intel 11th gen processors. 11th gen. Yeah. <laughs> Newer. Newer. You wish. <laughs> a better 720p webcam and 128 gigabytes of storage in the base model, which will run you or your parents 599 US dollars. And if none of this is impressive, well, find me another budget Windows laptop that doesn't look like one of those dummy units from IKEA. Don't bother trying to use them. They don't work. Really good meatballs though. And the US Supreme Court has reblocked the controversial Texas social media law known as HB 20 after it was unblocked by an appeals court earlier this month, reversing an initial block made by a federal judge in December. You got that? Do you know the physical toll that three bill blocks can have on a person? Block, blink block, blink block. If unblocked one more time, the law would prevent social media platforms with more than 50 million users from discriminating against users based on their viewpoint, making all kinds of routine platform moderation illegal. And if we did that, what's next? Forcing me to invite everyone to my party? There's a certain buy by curate people. You don't get it. <laughs> Now it's time for the Quick Bits, brought to you by Vessi, maker of footwear known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, waterproof. Are you always on the move, sometimes through very shallow bodies of water? Well, Vessi's everyday move shoes are for you. We're talking enhanced breathability, added support, a pull tab for easy on and off, vegan suede lace cages, extra midsole cushioning, the wipes, and of course the same waterproof Dymatex technology that's gonna make you wanna wear them everywhere may become a problem. Just kidding, it's the opposite. So keep your feet dry and save 25 bucks with our offer code techlinked at bestie.com slash techlinked. The Quick Bits are their own segment. The Quick Bits do what they want. Uh -uh. Google has announced they've seen the error of their ways and will merge Google Duo and Google Meet into a single video chat app because it's been two years and it's time. <laughs> Realizing you've made too many competing chat apps is hard, but it's part of growing up. Unfortunately, the new unified app will be called Google Meet, with the old Google Meet being called Meet Original, until it's eventually shut down. <laughs> then it'll be called Dead Meet. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. In other Google news, the tech giant has finally turned off the feature that allowed companies in India to mercilessly bowl over Android Messages users with ads using Rich Chat Services, or RCS. RCS advertising will return once Google can figure out how to reduce its amount and duration. Call the support line. <laughs> Maybe each company takes turns. <laughs> it's all Disney, all week. We want equal distribution of ads. <laughs> Oop, and even more Google News, kind of. As an engineering sample of the Pixel 7 phone showed up for sale in some sketchy listings on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Since buying this phone would technically be illegal, it's unclear what the seller managed to achieve other than giving us some grainy close-ups of a phone that Google already leaked themselves when they announced the Pixel 6a. That's what they do now, and it really takes the wind out of their own sales. Why even go on the internet? Well, I wanna see leaks. Leak me. Brooklyn-based neurotech company, OpenBCI, has partnered with VR headset maker, Varjo. 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 <laughs> to integrate EEG sensors into its Aero headset, which can track brain activity as a user does stuff in VR. Oh, wow, stuff? <laughs> Look at all this stuff. <laughs> so if you think the metaverse is stupid, 
It still is, but if I can play a game in VR that lets me actually use the Force by thinking about it, it I, that would be cool. It would I, be, just think about it for a second. That's what the Force is. Consider it. And there's a new kind of ransomware on the block. It's called Goodwill. And instead of extorting victims for money in order to decrypt their precious files, it forces them to do kind acts, like give clothes to homeless people and pay for someone's medical bills because it's America, and then post evidence on social media. I'm sure these hackers' hearts are in the right place, but if I grab five poor children and take them to Domino's, I'm pretty sure I'll be arrested. So maybe you should just extort people for money and then use that money to help people. I don't know, but don't do that. We're not saying you should do that. No, we shouldn't do anything. But This is not financial advice. <laughs> this episode is over. Come back on Friday for more not financial advice tech news, because frankly, if we ever stop doing this show, I don't actually know what happens.